Hello, I'll be talking about uh, Backbooster. It is a simple system uh, which has been implemented a lot of um, power supplies, uh, converting low voltage to high voltage. Um, basically, what you hear is DC to DC converters. They are easy to make um, and it follows a very simple principle using the charge and discharge principle of a capacitor. Okay, so for today, uh, we'll be looking at the various components uh, in making a Backbooster. But um, over time, we now have ICs that are being used for making backboosters, which is making it a very, very, very simple. But it follows a very basic principle, which I know if you get it here, uh, it becomes very easy for you to understand how the ICs work and how to implement them into your designs and then use them um, appropriately for most DC to DC converters. Get high voltages, get high currents, and it goes like that. Okay, all right, so first, uh, we're going to take a uh, Sorry, but it's going to take a let's say we have a DC volt of uh, let's say three volts. We have three volts, so I'm going to put that we have three volts, and I'm going to put a meter there for you to see three volts DC multimeter. So we have that, uh, we have ground. Uh, part of my design skills, uh, basically I'm doing it on, on, on a different high level, so you might see me using a lot of these symbols there instead of using the typical battery for beginners. Um, it's, it's quite, but basically it's just representing a battery. The negative is representing the negative side of the battery. So if we run our simulation, we see we have three volts here. Okay, so that is what we want to boost up and then see what we can get out of it. Let's say I have three volts and I want um, six volts. Or I want five volts out of three volts. Um, it's something we we're gonna look at that now. Okay, all right. So if I have a power supply of three volts and I, I want to make it up, um, we're gonna go through the simple design and I explain what the components are doing, um, and and that's how it's gonna be. So I want to add an inductor, which I know you can make an inductor because uh, it's quite simple. I'm gonna use an air fuel inductor, not a core. Uh, any one of them should work. It depends on the property and then depends on how much current you want. You know, the one with the core is going to give us something more than what, what the air is going to give to us. Okay, in terms of the back EMF. Okay, so let's use the one with the ion. Um, that's the one with the core. So let's say uh, I put an inductor of um, using 1 millihenry. I'm going to put probes on my lines just to measure the voltages. Which I have at um, any point. So I'm going to put one millihenry there. Sorry, uh, you want one millihenry? Yeah. And let's see what we got at the output. Okay. So we still have few three volts of that uh, after the inductor, and we can go on to add something else. Okay. All right. So now we still have three volts, and we want to move on. So I always say we're going to add a diode. But there are two types of diodes here for this design. We have the normal diode. And then you have the zener diodes. For back boosters or DC to DC converters, we always use zener diodes, and I'll explain why. But all the same, we're going to put both of them, and then you're going to see um, how they how they both work. Okay, all right. So I'm going to put a zener diode. I want six volts. So I'm going to put a zener diode of six volts. So I'm going to like six point eight. Okay, and I'm going to put a normal diode. Uh, we're going to swap them for zero zero one. Um, that that gives a maximum of fifty volts. Um, that's a reverse current of fifty volts. This has a reverse current of six volts. That's for the the zener. Okay, alright. Alright, so I said it works on the principle of charge discharge. So we need a capacitor because that's the only component that can charge and then discharge, right? Okay, capacitor generic, and I'm going to choose the. Uh, that one okay and with the values you have to experiment with what you really want okay okay so let's put everything together and let's see if it works if it doesn't work i explain why all right so first of all i'm going to put um, a normal diode uh, that has a reverse current of 50 volts i'm going to put a capacitor Oh man, and uh, let's see. Okay, so my capacitor goes here. Yeah? Uh, 
capacitor needs to be connected to ground. Okay, all right. So I put one UF here. I'm going to change that to 100. Uh, we have a diode there, and we're going to monitor the voltage we have here. What do we have there? 2.99. Just like what we had at the input. But there's just one thing left just to boot, boost it. And that is what we call the pulse. Basically, what we're going to do is um, this section where, where it's been highlighted. Um, I'm going to introduce a pulse at this point here. So, what it's going to do is uh, we're going to have the voltage come in here. It's going to charge the capacitor when it is on. When the pulse goes down, this capacitor here is going to discharge and it's going to go that way, right? Yeah. It comes on again, it charges. So basically what we're going to have is um, it charges to 3 volts. It goes off, it begins to discharge. So we begin to lose voltage here. It comes again, this, it charges again. Basically what the diode is doing is um, it's blocking. It's blocking it. So basically it's blocking it. So what we're going to do is, uh, what we're going to have is uh, instead of it discharging completely, it's not going to discharge into the source is coming from the diode is blocking it and then we're going to have a new reference so if it's three volts i'm going to have a new reference so the charge coming in here we're going to have a new reference of three volts and it's going to charge it again to six volts so six volts is going to go nine volts yeah it goes like a 12 volts like that but then before we can have such spike in charging um it depends on the amount of um current basically current is is also going to drive everything a lot of current which which has been generated that's when we're going to have that okay so that's when we have the pulse there so i'm going to introduce a pulse and i'll tell you how to make pulses um so i take up that and i tell i want the clock so i'm going to clock up to 50 hertz okay i'm going to clock up to 50 hertz and see what we have and i take my probe again and I put back there again and I run this time and this time we, we see the voltage has spiked up um, this is because of the the principle we just implemented just adding um, I mean a pulse in the continuous pulse there which is going to do that for us and if you take note of the voltage you realize that it's increasing it's increasing it did a first charge of three second charge of three that was six and then but because we don't have much much force coming in there anymore we're not going to have slow charging so you can see the voltage is going up now it's going up now it's going up now that is what happens if you use um, a regular diode um it's going to go up to it gets, it gets to its breakdown voltage and the breakdown voltage here is 50 volts so it's going to charge till it gets to 50 volts so if you put this in a typical system we're going to see the voltage going up to up to like 50 volts over time um, which is not going to be good for design um, we can have it um, damage something and more about with this one to current um, it's not really achieved okay because uh, we we pull in everything out out of the source okay so uh, let's look at what we, what we get when we use a Zina diode of six volts and I'll explain that one okay so I'm going to take the Zina diode of six volts and I put that on design. Okay. And we're gonna run a simulation again. And we you can see this time um we blocked at six volts because basically what we have is a uh, when the voltage goes beyond six volts, um because it has a breakdown of six point eight, it's gonna break it down there. And because we have a voltage drop of, of about uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 in silico silicon diodes, we are, we are not going to really see the 6.8, which is the breakdown for the Zina diode we selected. We are, we are expecting to see about 6.2. Okay, so that is what we have here. So we are expecting to have 6.2 to 6.3. And we can see that fluctuation there going up and down. This is due to the capacitor we selected. Uh, a higher capacitor is going to give us a much more stable voltage okay so this is how the the bug booster works um, go ahead and um, implement it in your designs there are a couple of ic's from uh, from lt uh, linear technology from for max that maxim um, there's a couple of ic's too from texas instrument so 
you go ahead and um, select some of them make a back boost to these to these converters you can implement them in your automobiles uh, where you can convert your 12 volts to 19 volts for various appliances in your cars um, speakers um, audio systems uh, gps anything you can apply it in your homes where you have a, a regular 5 volts you need 12 volts um, to to power it up so basically this is how the back booster works and um, it works fine here if you have any questions you can send me an email thank you